So you've done a bit of painting, you created a bit of art, and then you realize, hey, you kind of feel a little bit better. Or you've started to introduce art into your life and overall you felt better. Maybe it's filled a hole in your life. That's actually kind of like how it has been for me. In this video today, I'm going to be talking about how um, art has really improved my mental health, how art has almost kind of like lifted me out of this semi-depression that I've been suffering for most of my life. I've actually, through my art journey, managed to really dissect because I'm really into this. I'm really into psychology. I'm really into why this is making me feel better. So I've dissected seven ways art has actually made me feel much better about myself. Just to give you a little bit of background, ever since I was a teenager, you know, it's been a bit tough. Just the general day-to-day -day modern life has made me feel a bit lost, a bit purposeless, and I will often just sink into this hole of hopelessness of like what is the point of it all it's just been something that i've been struggling with all my life in in small ways and that has led me to leaving my corporate job in my late 20s to um, you know woofing all over the world woofing on organic farms um, learning how to live a sustainable life growing your own food i've also discovered yoga along the way and i have been teaching yoga for the past decade and yoga has really helped me in my mental wellness it wasn't until art that has actually lifted me to another level of mental wellness and these are the seven ways i have found in my experience how art has improved that i also just want to say up front that i am not a mental health professional uh, so this is just my experience i'm not giving anybody advice i'm just sharing uh, my story so with that said let's get on to the seven ways all right the first way i think a lot of us can relate is the actual process of creating art is super therapeutic, right? Seeing colors mix on your paper, on your palette. Um, color mixing is just one of these things that we enjoy doing. I know a lot of us enjoy swatching colors, just seeing colors on paper. Human beings have evolved with colors in our surroundings for thousands and thousands of years. Like we've been attracted to uh, the blue of the sky, the purpley hues of, of flower petals. And art is where we get to be an alchemist and to like mix it all together. And then just the act of swishing your brush into the paint and then creating strokes with your brush. A lot of uh, artists I know love to paint leaves just to feel better. And leaves has this wonderful way of just creating that swishiness. And it's not about the end result, but just the process of creating art is therapeutic. So that's the first reason why I find um, that I can't find it in anything else, you know, that creates that sense, that beautiful sense of therapy. All right, now we're gonna delve into a little of a more philosophical territory. And uh, the second reason is I feel that art has this open-endedness about it. I just love it. This whole blank page, you know, there's an infinite possibility of where your art can go. In today's world, especially in the education system that I went through, a lot of it is this is how you do something, step by step. But when it's come to art, um, wow, it's, you can go anywhere. And that's why two paintings are never the same. They never look the same because even if you try to copy another painting, it's never gonna be exact because there's just your way of painting a line or swishing a color. And that open-endedness of it is super exciting to me. It's like, wow, very, very exhilarating. I love that. The next reason is the sense of agency. And a sense of agency means you can control. You are in the control seat. When it comes to art, you are in control of what you want to paint, how you want to paint, which color you want to choose, which brush you want to choose, the strokes, the subject. A lot of things in life you can't control. You know, you can't control uh, the family you are born into. You cannot control what your parents say. You cannot control what your kids want to do with their lives. And I'm no trauma ter therapist, but from what I understand about trauma, trauma happens when something happens to you where you are feeling out of control. And so doing art and having that, bringing that back that sense of control, just incredibly healing, is incredibly therapeutic. I won't say that parenthood is traumatic, but a lot of very early motherhood is like, you don't have a sense of agency, a lot of things. Your baby's crying, you don't know what to do, you have to pick it up, you're hungry, you need to go to the toilet, but you just cannot, you just don't have agency over those things and you just almost like have to submit yourself to life circumstances. And I think art just brings it all back to me. I have that sense of control, that sense of agency, and that is just 
incredibly empowering. All right, the next one is fun because I, find, I call it the sense of mastery. But really, it is um, like solving a problem. You know, every art piece, everything that you want to paint, you want to achieve the highest level possible, don't you? You want to reach to your fullest potential. And, you know, also painting is like a, a puzzle. You're trying to solve the puzzle of composition, the puzzle of depth. It's a puzzle to how do you create the most beautiful, eye-pleasing piece of art that's pleasing to yourself and to people. And I find this whole journey into mastery really exhilarating and really exciting when I see the way I progress through my art and how far I've come and where I am and where I know I want to go. It's, it's so cool. It's so amazing. I really look up to top athletes. I look up to people who are at the top of their, in whatever they do. And it's so inspiring because they reach this mastery by just being crazy committed to what they love, uh, like Michael Jordan. I don't know if you watched that, that documentary that he made about the Chicago Bulls. Oh my God, 10 episodes, so pumped, and I'm so inspired by him. He is talented, yes, but he works so hard, and he's the master of what he does, and that, to me, in art, is very exciting. The next reason is a sense of pride and achievement of creating something tangible. So like I said, in motherhood, you know, you can cook and you can clean and you, you know, you uh, raise your children. But a lot of the things is very unseen, you know, whatever, how nice and how tidy you make the house, it just becomes undone straight away. When I teach a yoga class, it's great. You know, I deliver a beautiful class. I'm happy with myself. My students are happy, but there's just nothing tangible at the end. It, it just goes and there's an experience, which is great. But art, it's like I'm creating I'm creating something. I'm creating something from nothing and um, I can hold it, I can feel it, I can see it, I can gift it, I can put it on a wall. It's, um, it's a whole other sense of achievement and pride that I've never experienced before in anything that I've done. Um, so that is cool and that makes me feel so good. So the next reason, it's, it's quite a deep reason for me and um, I find painting flowers, painting nature, is like a devotional practice. And if the word devotion scares you a little bit, because it might be going into maybe spirituality or religious territory, yeah, it kind of is, because um, we know a bit about you know, anthropology, a lot of tribes in the past, in every part of the world, they have uh, a sense of nature worship. They, you know, worship the mountains, worship the flowers, you know, um, rituals, flowers are always brought into it. And I never kind of really understood this idea of devotion, um, devotional practice to, to something else outside yourself until I started painting. And when I started painting, sorry, this, this is a bit, um, not sure why I tear up, but it's, it's that, you know, it, it, it is that deep for me. When I started painting and I'm observing the flowers, I'm observing how intricate it could be, how wild, how ferocious. Some flowers are just so simple, some is so ethereal and fragile. All of it, that observation, I realize is devotion because as I observe and I spend time with nature in that sense, whether it's a picture of a flower or an actual flower, and I'm trying to recreate it on my paper, um, it brings me closer to the subject, brings me closer to the flowers and a lot of realizations come up like how every flower is different, every flower is unique, every flower is imperfectly imperfect and somehow um, the flower actually speaks to my heart. It makes me realize that I'm imperfectly imperfect. Imperfectly perfect. <laughs> um, and uh, then I just sort of truly get what it means to, 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 be, to have a devotional practice. So painting flowers is like a prayer for me. It, it is like a prayer. Um, when I spend time with the flower, with what I'm painting, it's, that, it's like meditation, it's prayer. And I love it. It really fills my heart. The most important reason I realize, and I think why, uh, why art has benefited my mental health so much is because I get into a state of flow. And I think a lot of us artists are familiar with this state of flow, right? The state of flow is when you are so fully in your work, in the painting, you're so fully in the process, you're very, very present, time disappears, 
you uh, you almost know what the next step is. Like you're like moving in an automatic fashion because you have done this so many times, yet you are doing something new. And it's so, so cool, isn't it? The state of flow. Um, I'm very, very influenced by uh, this podcast I've been listening to called The Emerald. And the creator of the podcast, his name is Josh Shry, and I will uh, link his podcast in the description below there. A lot of his podcast is dedicated to this state, this trance state, this flow state that human beings have been trying to achieve all of the past and all the, the millennia, the 99.5% or whatever of human history, we knew, all of us knew, that is this flow trance state that's super powerful. That's why in so many tribes there's chanting, dancing, singing, um, all this for the purpose of getting into a collective trance state, this flow state, because this state is actually the state that um, we heal, we integrate, we reset, we forget our ego, we leave that for a while, and we need this state. We need to regularly go into this state to apparently uh, live uh, a, well, a well life, a good life, a life where you are not feeling disconnected and alone and unbelong. And I believe somehow this state is here for us to, yeah, to discover again through art, through a lot of ways that our modern life has forgotten, definitely helped me raise my mental wellness. Ping-ponging from being hopeless, depression, sinking into why am I here, motherhood's so hard, uh, life is so hard, what's the meaning of all this, to now, you know, if I regularly go into this flow state, if I paint daily, I actually feel that it balances everything out. The hard stuff is still hard, but I think, being in flow, being in that prayer, being in that meditation of painting often cancels it out and balances me so, so fully, so thoroughly. I'm really obsessed about this flow state and I am going to, I'm planning to make a video, a whole video just about flow. So let me know if you're interested in that. I am really keen, I'm still putting my, my script and my research together. That's it, those are my seven ways I have discovered how art has lifted me up, how art is and every day is still so wonderful. I haven't even gone into the whole social aspect of it, you know, the whole social media, YouTube, and all of us cheering each on it. That's a whole other video. But this is just creating art on its own. It's how water, painting flowers in watercolor has benefited me. And I am so grateful to have discovered this. Seriously, I don't know where I'll be in life without it. So thank you. If you enjoyed watching the video, please like, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.